you know, I think I've avoided uh, using the phrase critical race theory on this channel ever, and I'm proud of that. Unfortunately, I've had to break that streak today um, because I think that the debate over this issue has gotten so dumb um, that it's, it, it's crossed – uh, the threshold from something that I refuse to talk about because it's so dumb to I have to talk about it because it is so dumb. Now, this latest story involves uh, my home state here, Florida, and the uh, public uh, school system, which I'm quite familiar with. I was, you know, I graduated from public school here you know, only a few years ago. I'm in my early 20s. And so this story has a bit of a, a personal aspect to it for me. But first, before we get into that, I, I, I guess I'll just address my thoughts on critical race theory in general. Now, I think that this is a dumb issue. I think it's a total red herring. It's something that doesn't matter, that um, nobody should really pay attention to. That Now, that doesn't mean that I think that it's dumb that people are mad at it. People shouldn't like it. It's, it, you know, it's, uh, all it is is just naked, um, you know, anti-white hatred, l sort of dressed up in Marxian language, uh, but frankly, to call this Marxism makes it seem like it's something much more interesting and a lot more, I guess, intellectual than it actually is. I mean, people can, I guess, um, use Marxist language to dress up any sort of prejudices they have and then call it um, a branch of Marxism. But the difference between um, these, uh, I guess, these little, um, these little baby Marxisms, uh, these little tiny offshoots like critical race theory, and actual Marxism is that um, you know Karl Marx wrote this really awful and long multi-volume book called Das Kapital that you can actually read and you can understand his point and you can, I think, pretty easily. Um, you know, tear it apart and um, refute his points, but at least he was making an actual point. There's some clear logic there. Um, for those of you unfamiliar, the core essence of Marxism is that uh, all value in the economy um, is can be de is derived from the quantity of labor hours put into you know the manufacturing process, or I guess the um, the you know the production process in general. And so, therefore, if um, you know, if a laborer is paid any less than uh, the sale price of whatever good it is they're producing, uh, then they are not making their marginal product, which runs um, counter uh, to the understanding of mainstream economics, which is that workers make their marginal product, meaning you, you know, in a competitive market, you earn as much as you produce. Um, in, you know, in terms of value, Karl Marx says that that's not true, uh, and that profit made by entrepreneurs by the boss is exploitation, and that you're just stealing the value, um, you know, generated uh, by your employees. And so, under this Marxist framework, you have an oppressor and you have the oppressed. The oppressor is the employer, and the oppressed is the employee. Now, this is a dumb point. Obviously, you know, if you have a, uh, you know, if you have a factory uh, that produces screwdrivers and uh, the, you have the guys on the floor in the factory who, um, who are actually using, you know, their hands to forge and to shape uh, the screwdrivers, there's other people who work in that facility um, who do contribute to the production process who are not just the laborer. And down the line, you have distributors, you have, um, you have uh, uh, salespeople and of, of retailers, and of course you have the, you know, whoever the managers are, whoever you consider to be the boss, the quote unquote capitalist, the owner of the business, you know, who invested the capital to start and to, you know, build up this factory. There are people other than laborers who play an important role, a pivotal role in the functioning of any economy. And fundamentally, workers do make their marginal product because value is always subjective. There is, um, uh, you know, value is not derived from the quantity of labor hours. I almost forgot to say that because it's, you know, it, it, you know, it's something so obvious. 
um, you know, a product is worth whatever it is worth, you know, to the individual who's buying it. And the same thing is true of the value of labor. Um, your labor is worth whatever somebody is willing to pay you for it. And people are willing to pay you whatever your labor is worth to them. So, you know, whatever value you're producing for your employer is your marginal product, and that's what you're paid. But you might be thinking, well, what does all this have to do with critical race theory? Um, and the answer is almost nothing. Um, the only thing that I have been able to find that is, is carried over from critical from Marxism into critical race theory uh, is the sort of oppressor and oppressed class. And in critical race theory, the oppressor class is the white man uh, and the oppressed is everybody else. And so there is, uh, just like in Marxism, between the capitalist and the worker, uh, between the white man and the non-white man, there is uh, a, uh, a conflict uh, which you know, can never be resolved, and they just have conflicting interests. And in order for, uh, for the white man to do better, uh, the non-white man must be exploited. And so what this means in effect, it, you know, if you teach this to school children, is you're telling the white kids, hey, everything you have, um, everything you achieve in life, you didn't earn. You didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. And it's telling all of the non-white kids, hey, <laughs> no matter what you do, you're not going to get ahead in life. No matter how good you think you have it in life, you should have it a lot better and you're being held down by the white man. And uh, you need to look at that white kid sitting next to you and say, gee, why don't you get your boot off my neck, white boy? And I've seen no real logical or theoretical support as to why this is um, other than just, you know, ooh, my slavery. I don't even see the thin veneer of, um, uh, you know, of, of philosophy or logic behind the, uh, you know, the CRT ideology. It sounds to me like there were just some college professors who really, really didn't like white folks, and they came up with this idea. They called it a theory, and then they said, oh, gee, doesn't this just seem like we hate white folks? How can we make this seem more academic? Oh, I know. Let's add, let's add in some, some Marxist language, uh, <laughs> and then people will just consider us to be a branch of Marxists. And so this is not a serious academic discipline. All that is is just anti-white grievance politics, which is why I'm, you know, I'm pretty satisfied and happy that the Florida Department of Education um, has issued an edict uh, to public schools saying that, uh, you know, you can't teach this to the kids because this is not something you should be wasting your time teaching kids on. And somehow there are people who have the gall to get upset at this and claim that somehow uh, the Florida Department of Education and, of course, by extension, Governor Ron DeSantis are oppressing them and censoring free speech and saying, oh, are, what about uh, – I thought all these conservatives loved free and open debate. Well, look at this cancel culture. They're canceling uh, um, uh, uh, teachers for teaching you know, real um, you know, academic uh, theory stuff. Which, you know, these arguments are, of course, incredibly cynical and disingenuous. Obviously, you can say whatever you want. I think even as a teacher, if you wanted to advocate for this on your Facebook page all day and, you know, host, you know, private uh, critical race theory study group sessions, I'm sure that you'd still be able to keep your job. Um, all the State Board of Education said, they, they, they took a very mild step. All they said was, hey, you know how we uh, imprison children five days a week and force them to go to these state indoctrination camps? Um, maybe in these state indoctrination camps, we shouldn't um, indoctrinate non-white children into thinking that they can never achieve anything in life and you know, indoctrinate white children into thinking that they are horrible, evil, demonic oppressors. Maybe this isn't the best idea for social cohesion um, you know, because the Prussian model of education, uh, for those of you who are unaware, was invented to breed uh, new loyal citizens. That is what you know, the Prussian model exist for. That's the kind of education we have here in the United States. It's supposed to make people who are loyal primarily to the government, but also are, um, you know, productive cogs in the wheel who contribute to society without rocking the boat. That is 
the fundamental goal of public education. Now, I disagree with that. I think that public education is terrible. I'd like it to go away. I think that it's that we should, you know, that we shouldn't even um, be teaching kids to just be loyal drones of the state. Uh, but <laughs> to that end, probably shouldn't teach kids to hate each other. I mean, I think that that's something that people who, you know, uh, support public education and those who don't should be able to agree on that that's just not a good idea for society and especially hey uh, we're not saying that you can't say that at all if you want to teach your own kid to hate other kids and to teach your kid that they are that they were born you know a white devil who uh is totally irredeemable and uh is going to oppress uh black kids uh, for their entire lives and that there's nothing that they can do um to repent or to uh, you know, make things right in the world. Go ahead, that's your right. But maybe, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't compel um, the children of the rest of, po of the population um, to also undergo this same sort of child abuse by law. Because you know what happens um, if uh, you know if you if you skip school, <laughs> the law comes after you because you have to go to school. You know, you're not allowed to skip. And so the fact that a um, that a decision like this at the Florida State Board of Education would become national news and would be trending on Twitter all day um, just shows how sick and twisted of a society we are. Because like, this is not something that should be an issue. This is basic, basic stuff that people should not disagree on. There's much more important things that people disagree over that should be taking up all of our time. Um, something that... <laughs> people should not be arguing about is whether or not public schools, you know, should be forcing children um, to uh, sit through um, racist hate uh, curriculums. That's why I say this is such a ridiculous and stupid distraction. Because, I mean, this is really the most basic of steps. This is not something that's going to make the world, uh, you know, a better place. Um, this is just, you know, making the world... Uh, into, this is slowing down the process of making the world into a much, much worse place. I'll put it that way. Um, because the public education system teaches children all sorts of terrible things already and, you know, wastes uh, quite a few years of their lives that they could be doing productive things and learning important skills that would actually help them in life. There should be no debate over, you know, um, taking, you know, uh, removing critical race theory from, from public school classrooms. If there's any debate, it should be over, uh, it should be how fast we're going to dismantle and abolish public schools. Or at least how soon, um, you know, you stop mandating kids go there. Now, obviously there are, you know, there's these baby steps that you have between that school choice, homeschooling as an option, this sort of thing. Although, to be fair, um, as I said in the beginning of this video, I'm a product of the Florida public school system. I graduated from it not too many years ago. And I have to say, I did not, you know, from, my, from what I recall, I don't remember any creepy indoctrination stuff. Now, I think that the culture has moved so much just in the past four years as a result of Trump being elected. That might no longer be the case. Even here, even if I went, if I started school right now and went through, you know, the full, God, what is it, 12 years? such a long time, 12 years of public schooling, um, the public schools of today might already be much worse than when I went there. But I mean, when I went there, it was normal people. I was not being fed creepy indoctrination stuff. And I know you'll probably say, oh, rose colored glasses, nostalgia, it's just like the people who say that the press was honest in the 1970s, which is of course not true. But I mean, I've been pretty aware of this kind of stuff and pretty um, skeptical of public schools since I was like in middle school. But everything that all my problems with with public schools and the indoctrination and stuff like that and, um, you know, other than I guess the Pledge of Allegiance, which I still think is friggin creepy. Most of my issues with public school did not really apply to my experience. I generally had normal people um, who taught me and they taught normal um, you know, productive things that are just general good information, you know, like geometry and um, algebra and history and, and not like creepy, weird, um, you know, indoctrinating history or even 
um, total like U.S. sycophant history. You know, unlike in English, we read decent literature, and you know there. I just I can't think of any um, uh, crazy weird uh, you know teacher stuff that happened to me. And I think I'm probably lucky in that respect. I'm sure a lot of people have to deal with a lot of crazy, ridiculous teachers because, um, you know, teachers are uh, essentially prison wardens. And so I still don't think that when I have kids, I would put them through public school. I think I'll do everything in my power to make sure that they're not put through public school. But uh, I know that that's not going to be everybody. I think that the, the push should be to try and get as many kids out of public school as possible. But... As long as there is a vast majority of the children in our society going through public schools, you should care about what's being taught there, and we should ensure that what is taught there is as um, that, that as little poison is taught in these public schools as possible. And so there, that's out of the way. Hopefully, I don't have to talk about this issue again because it, like I said, it should not be an issue. But there's so much there's so much stupidity going around about this right now that I, you know, I. There's, I, I had to address, and it's a, it's a weekend, you know, I kind of go off on weekends on little less, um, things that I think are, are a little less, like, super important, that are back burner issues, I'll put it that way. That's what, what, I try to take the time on the weekends to address that. So, with that said, I will see folks back here tomorrow.